okay, the first thing that we'll do whenever we're trying to calculate the limit is that we plug in this number into all the x to see what we get. As long as we don't get 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, or any other indeterminate form, we shall be able to draw a nice conclusion. And let's check this out right here. So let me plug in 0 into here. So we will have on the top as the inverse tangent. We write this as the inverse tangent. Some people write this as the R tangent with ARC, which is the same, right? And I will have 0 in here and then plus 1 over e to the 0 power. And then we will have the plus cosine of 0, right? And now on the top, what do we have? What's the inverse tangent of 1? Well, that's something you have to know. Tangent of what angle will give you 1? The answer to that is pi over 4, right? So the inverse tangent of positive 1, we get positive pi over 4. And then on the denominator, e to the 0 is 1. And cosine of 0 is also 1. So we have 1 plus 1 on the bottom. Namely, it's equal to 2 on the bottom. Pi over 4 over 2. Altogether, we get pi over 8. And as you can see, we have a nice number right here. And this will be our nice answer to that limit. So be sure you always try to plug in first to see what do we have, right? So this right here is the answer. And now let's move on to the next example. OK, next, let's take a look of this limit. And once again, we are going to plug in this number into all the x first to see what we have. And let me just work this out for you guys real quick and I'll put it down right here. So I will plug in negative 8 into this x. So I will have parentheses negative 8 like this and then square and then minus 64 over 3 times this x which is the negative 8 now square plus 26 times this is negative 8 for the x, right? And then at the end we add the 16 to this, okay? All right, on the top, you can work this out real quick. Negative 8 squared is going to be positive 64. Minus 64, you get 0 on the top. Over, if you work this out on the denominator, you can use the calculator whatsoever, you will actually get 0 as well, all right? So you can just work that out on your own. And now, when we have 0 over 0, can we draw any conclusion? No. This is just an indication that we have to do more work, all right? And by the way, this is not the answer to the question. This is just that you have to do more work to figure out the answer. Don't ever put down do more work on the test, all right? You have to do more work and then figure out the correct answer, all right? So anyway, let's see. What can we do in this situation, though? Notice on the top, we have x squared minus 64. Back in your algebra class, what do we usually do with that? This is the difference of two squares. We can factor it, right? Now, let's try to factor the top and the bottom to see if there's any good things that will happen. Let me write this down again. This is going to be the limit. And you see, as a good habit, you should write down the limit again, all right? x approaching to negative 8 on the top, x squared minus 64. We can factor that, and we will get x minus 8 times x plus 8, right? On the bottom, what can we do? It's a trinomial. We can also factor it. Let me show you guys how I would like to sh factor this right here. All right? So let me put this down. This is called the tic-tac-toe method. 3x squared plus 26x plus 16. What I do first is I will just go ahead and draw the tic-tac-toe boxes like this. And I will ask myself, what times what will give me 3x squared? Well, I can only have 3x and x in this case, right? And now I move to here. What times 12 will give me positive 16? And you have to be careful. Choose the correct number, correct combination, and put it in the correct box. You will see. I am going to use 8 times 2, which is positive 16, right? I'm going to show you guys the correct order. And I'm going to put down the 2 here, and then the 8 here. And the reason is because now I can show you when I do this, Take 3x times the 8, we get past the 24x, and I will just do 2 times x. And you see, I cross multiply to check answer. 2 times x, that's 2x. 24x plus 2x, together, we of course get the 26x, all right? 
And if this number doesn't match with this number, that means we just have to pick out the numbers and you know just try it out, right? But that's just factoring. Anyway, on the denominator, this is the factor of. You are going to read it across. 3x plus 2, that's the first factor. Let me put it down. 3x plus 2 times the second factor, which is x plus 8. Aha, this is the factoring. And now what? We see that x plus 8, x plus 8, they cancel each other out. How wonderful is that, right? And then what do we do next? Plugging the number negative 8 into this x and that x and work it out to see what we have, right? Now, I'm plugging the number. I'm not going to put the lim x approaching anymore because I'm evaluating already. Plugging negative 8 right here, we will have negative 8 minus 8 and then over this is 3 times this negative 8 and then plus 2. And now let's do this real quick. Negative 8 minus 8 is negative 16 over this is negative 24, right? And then plus 2, that's negative 22. Of course, and then you just simplify the fraction. But this is a nice number. That means we have the nice answer already. Positive, and then of course, you know, 2 goes into 16, 8 times, 2 goes into 11. I mean, 2 goes into 22, 11 times. Altogether, you get 8 over 11. And this right here will be the answer for that. And now, let's check out another technique. Okay, let's take a look at this limit. Of course, we should plug in this one into all the x to see what we have. So let's do that. Plugging one here, we have one, and then minus this one, and then over square root, and then this x is the one, and we have that square plus eight, and then the x is once again the one. After that, we have the minus three. And now let's see. On the top, one minus one is zero. Over on the bottom, this is one square, which is one plus 8 times 1, which is 8. 1 plus 8 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. And then minus this 3 is 0. 0 over 0. What can we do? We have to do more work, right? In order to figure out the answer, we cannot draw any conclusion at the moment. And now, here's a new thing in this example. We see that we have a square root, right? We have a square root term right here, and then minus 3. Whenever we have a square root term, in the limit question, try the following. Namely, we are going to multiply the top and bottom by what we call the conjugate. And let me show you how it works. I want to fix the square root, all right? So I will multiply the bottom by its conjugate, which is the square root of x squared plus 8x. This was a minus. I'm going to change that to a plus. And then we have the 3 after that, OK? So it's just like this. And on the top, of course, we do the same thing. And be sure, this is x minus 1. We should put that in your parentheses and then multiply this. So we have the square root of x squared plus 8x and then plus 3 after that. So this is the step in this case. OK, this is equal to we haven't plugging x approaching to 1 yet. So I have to write down the limit as x approaching to 1. OK, just Keep always writing down this, right? Don't complain. And then, let's see. The purpose for me to multiply this is because I need to fix the square root in the denominator, right? So let's go ahead and do that first. And this is how you can multiply the conjugate out. Use the following formula. Because you have a minus b, right? This is technically two term. a minus b times a plus b. So the formula says, Whenever you have a minus b, and then you multiply by a plus b, this is going to give us what? This is going to give us the first term, and you square that, namely a square, and then you minus the second term, which is the b, and you square that, right? So now, this is the first term. You square that. Square, square root, cancel. So we have just the inside. I will put that down, x squared plus 8x, OK? And then we subtract the second term squared. The second term is what? It's just the 3, right? So you square the 3, you get 9. So just like this, OK? And remember, the purpose for us to multiply this is to fix the bottom. With that being said, 
we multiplied it already. Don't multiply out the top, right? Do not multiply out the top. Just keep it as how it is and wait for good things to happen. Trust me. So on the top, let me just write it down as how it is. We have x minus 1 times that. Parentheses, square root of x squared plus 8x, and then plus 3 after this, OK? And now you may be wondering, what can we do from here? Well, you can still plug in 1 into all the x. And let me tell you, you still will end up with 0 over 0. And now, from the previous example, you have seen that. OK, you see, this is x squared plus 8x minus 9. What can we usually do? Factor it, right? Just like the previous example. So if I factor this, check this out. What do we get? Let me put this down below. Well, I need to have x times x. And then to get negative 9, I need to have, well, 9 and 1, one of them being negative, right? I need to end up with positive 8. So let me put down plus 9 minus 1. How is that? Right? We just factor this, and we get that. And now here is the most exciting part. Because x minus 1 here cancels out with this x minus 1. All in all, you are just talking about we have to figure out the limit as x approaching to 1 on the top, just this. And you see, this is why I told you, don't multiply things out. Leave it as how it is on the top. Just multiply out the thing that you are trying to fix, which was the bottom, OK? Anyway, let's continue. x squared plus 8x. At the end, we have the plus 3. On the bottom, it's x plus 9. And now, Whenever you cancel something out on the top and on the bottom, plugging the number again, usually it will work out already. Let's see, plugging 1 into this x and x, so we will get, and you see, when I'm plugging the number inside, I don't need to put on the lim anymore <laughs> because I'm evaluating already. 1 in here, so we have 1 square and then plus 8 times 1, and then after that, we have the plus 3 over 1 for the x, and then plus 9. And now, let's see what do we have. This is what? 1 plus 8, which is 9, right? Square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. On the bottom, 1 plus 9, which is 10. OK, 6 over 10. Use fractions, because we are adults now, right? This is 3 over 5, right? And that's it. And now, let's see another situation. OK, now we have this limit question on the board. What shall we do first? Well, as a good habit, we should always plug in this number into all the x, right? 0 over 0. We have to do more work. So as we can see, we have a complex fraction situation. And this is what we can do. Look at the denominators of the small fractions. Namely, we have the 3 right here, and then the x plus 2, right? And we can just go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by the least common denominator of the small fractions. So I will multiply by 3 and also the factor x plus 2. Multiply this on the top and also on the bottom. So let me do that right here. This is how we can clean up the complex fraction situation. And now let's see what we get from here. Still write down the limit as x approaching to 4 because we haven't done any evaluating yet, right? And once again, you see the point for us to Multiply this is that I want to fix these two little fractions inside of the big fraction, right? So I will actually multiply this inside for the top. I will have to multiply the out. And now let's see what do we have. x over x plus 2 times 3 times x plus 2. We know the x plus 2 will cancel, so we just have 3 times x. Namely, we have 3x, right? And then let's bring down the minus. And when we have this times that, you see the 3 and 3 will cancel, and we just have the 2 times this, right? So let me put this down for you guys. We have the 2 times the x plus 2, like that. And of course, be sure you maintain that parentheses. You can distribute already, but let me just put it down right here for you guys. And on the bottom, there was nothing wrong earlier. Let me just keep it as how it is. I'm not going to multiply out anything, OK? So I will first bring down the 3, I'll write it down, and then the 3x minus 12, and then here we have the x plus 2. And now, here's a small common mistake. People tend to just cancel this x plus 2 and that x plus 2, which is incorrect. 
because on the top, I haven't combined like terms yet, all right? So let's do that. On the top here, we have the 3x, and then let's distribute the negative 2 into the parentheses. Negative 2 times x, we have negative 2x, and then negative 2 times 2 is minus 4. And now what? 3x minus 2x, that's x, and then we have the minus 4 after that, right? And now, that's the top, x minus 4. And is there anything that we can do on the denominator though? Don't multiply out. But better, try to think about if there's anything we can factor and cancel things out. Remember, your goal is to show something that on the top that cancel out with something on the bottom, right? Hopefully that's the case. And in this factor here, 3x minus 12, we can actually factor out 3, right? So let me write this down for you guys with a small underline like this. I can factor out 3 times, and then the factor will be x minus 4, isn't it? And now what? On the top, I have x minus 4. That can be canceled out with this, x minus 4, isn't it? So, all in all, I have the limit as x goes to 4. On the top, I just have a 1. On the bottom, this is 3 times 3, so we have the 9, and then we have the x plus 2. If you would like, you could plug in the 4 into this x and calculate it already, but let me put this down for you guys, all right? So we cancel things out, and then be sure you plug in again. Plug in the 4 in here, 1 over 9 times 4. And then we have the plus 2 after that. And let's do this. This is 1 over 4 plus 2 is 6, times 9 is 54. And therefore, the answer is 1 over 54, all right? So good.